Dr. Tishman, thanks so much for being with us. Just can you explain how emergency preservation resuscitation works and why it's necessary? Oh, great. Thanks for, uh, for having me. Uh, well, the, the problem that we're dealing with is trauma patients who are bleeding to death, and really the trauma surgeons are fighting the clock to try to save them. So the idea with this uh, uh, approach that we call EPR is to cool them down as fast as possible, and as you said, to kind of take cells down to a point where there's almost no need for oxygen, and uh, at that point, they'll do okay with not having blood flow for a period of time while the surgeons can get control of the bleeding. And what state is the patient in during that process? Well, we've just called it a, a preservation state, and I know we and some other people at times have called it suspended animation, but I, I think the important thing is that they're not dead. This is an extraordinary uh, approach that we're taking to try to, to buy time and save patients who would otherwise die because we know the patients in, that come in with a cardiac arrest from trauma have a less than one in 10 chance of surviving. And when you say they're not dead, uh, presumably their heart's not beating, is there any brain activity? Well, at the, at the point that they initially have the cardiac arrest, there's still some, if you were to look at the uh, electroencephalogram, we're looking at brain waves. But certainly as we cool them down, that would stop and it would be flat. But the important thing is the brain is still alive. The cells are still there, they're still working, they just need much less oxygen to survive. And that's what, again, that's what's giving us the time to try to save them. And how much time are you likely to be able to buy? Well, right now, based on uh, the studies that we've done in the laboratory, as well as uh, experience of cardiac surgeons who use the same kind of approach to do complex cardiac surgery and operations on the aortic arch, we're hoping for at least 45 minutes to an hour but in the lab, we've pushed this to two hours and maybe even three hours. And we certainly hope in the future that we could uh, even have some more time. But from a, a trauma surgeon standpoint, one hour is huge. Right. What's the impediment to making it longer than that, moving from hours into potentially days? Well, that, days are really far, far away from the kind of things we're looking at to try and save trauma patients. Uh, we're, we really only need a couple hours. So... What right. we need to work on... Sorry, I mean, I wasn't so much asking about the need, but I, I suppose, is there, a, is there a medical reason why it, would be, why it wouldn't be possible? Well, cells really can't uh, survive for too long without oxygen. Now, certainly, uh, we can develop certain medications and maybe the ideal fluid, and we're just talking about using plain saltwater saline right now, uh, that might be able to buy us more hours um, but I think we're, we're you know, millennia away from, from getting into the days or longer kind of preservation. And just physiologically, the process of taking the blood out of the body and replacing it with this saline solution that cools down uh, the, the body, how is that done? I mean, presumably at some point you've got a mixing between the blood and the saline, no? How do you avoid that? Well, well the, by, when we see the patient, they presumably have lost... Uh, at least half of their blood volume just because of the injuries. And, and our goal isn't so much removing the blood, it's just that uh, in order to cool the body fast enough to, to stop the processes in time to be able to, to save them, uh, this, this kind of flush is the best thing that we've come up with. So we, we put a large cannula directly as a, as a big tube uh, directly into the aorta and flush them with ice cold fluid to do this and will drain from the right side of the heart to basically just let what blood's still in the body and the fluid that we uh, pump into them drain out, and we'll just basically discard all of that fluid. Dubbed the bionic kangaroo, the experimental robot can jump more than a foot high and three feet forward thanks to elastic tendons and batteries that recharge on landing.